Hello everybody and welcome to another painting video by myself and uh, today we're going to be checking out an M18 Hellcat for bolt action. Uh, this is actually a kit I bought myself months ago and uh, since starting to work at home uh, I've realized I have this this library sat behind me in, in a black cabinet that's just off shot uh, full of stuff, you know, my to-do pile and I've realized I can convert that pile of shame into some interesting videos and the Hellcat is one that I've been looking at since I was told I could do that uh, and I've been eyeing it up for a couple of weeks and going it's about time I delved back into some armour and I thought well the Hellcat will be the perfect one to, to start with. It's got some interior detail in it, it's got a beautiful exterior, it's a gorgeous model kit, really really nice, uh, easy, enjoyable to build and everything so before I start into it I have to run through a couple of things I forget to mention later. Uh, the model was built, was primed with just uh, Adeptus, Adeptus, is it Adeptus? Mechanica Standard Grey, just the aerosol. It was primed in that before we started anything. I totally don't mention that throughout the rest of the tutorial. And overall, this is a really fun one, and I hope you enjoy it. So let's get stuck in. Okay, everyone, now we have our Hellcat down on the table. You can see I'm wearing gloves today. We're going to be doing a lot of airbrushing on this one, as I've said before. And... What I've done with the Hellcat, because there's a little bit of interior detail that I want to make sure I don't miss, I've built the Hellcat in several uh, sub-assemblies. So let's break those down for you and show you how I've constructed it. So let's take the turret off. That's one. We then have the turret basket, which is a, se a separate one. Now this will glue to the underside of the turret once it's painted and, and all sorted. Then we have the upper hull which I remove, and then we're left with the interior and the lower hull. Now, because the vehicle is obviously going to be all of drab in some form or other, um, we want to paint the interior first. So I'm going to do the interior, at least get the base colour down. That way it allows me to glue this down, and once this is glued down, I can then just plug this hole and work on the rest of the vehicle without contaminating the paintwork that I've already done uh, internally. So. You can probably hear the um, compressor running there. So what I have in the airbrush now is Citadel's Air White Scar just to get a few layers of that down into the Hellcat. So uh, let me see if I can make sure it works. Should be good. I'm going to do a few layers of White Scar just to get that colour in. And then from there we'll glue the top on and uh, proceed from that point. So. So we have the white down on the interior of the Hellcat and we have the top hull glued down. This gives me plenty of room to work on the, the inside of the hull for a bit of weathering and stuff later on. Now, little historical stuff. I have been researching and have been looking at Hellcat interiors and a lot of the times the actual floor plate is painted all of drab too. Um, I guess if you're if your eyes are good enough from a German aircraft, maybe you would see a little glint of white. But then again, you know, there's white stars all over it too. So I've taken this choice just to go with a white interior because it will show off the fact that there is actually something in the model once the turret and the turret basket are in place. Plus it leaves a nice contrast between what will be a fairly drab interior uh, on the turret at least with this at the bottom of it with a bit of weathering, a bit of dirt and so on. And I just want to make something that looks a bit more realistic and a bit more interesting and pleasing to the eye the closer you get to it, you know. So when you're looking at it top down, you go, oh, there's a floor in there and so on. So <clears throat> we're going to be on to our first stage of colouring. And as I probably mentioned in the intro, I'm going to be using the US Olive Drab Color Modulation Set from AK Interactive. This is a fantastic set. I've been using it on my Flames of War Army very extensively. And as you can see, it comes with all these different paints that go, you know, from a shadow color right up to a shine. And it leaves a fantastic finish, particularly at 15 mil. Uh, I'm not even using all the paints at 15 mil. I might still not need all the paints at 28 mil. I mean, this is really geared towards 35th scale scale modeling, 
rather than uh, a wargaming miniature. But what it does provide you as a person painting uh, American vehicles is it gives you a step-by-step -step process, and that's really important. So that's that's the good way to keep it simple. It's also a good way to do batch production so that you know at each stage there is one color you apply to the hull or the outer of the vehicle. So the first one we're putting down is Olive Drab Shadow. This is the darkest out of the set. We're probably going to go up maybe th four stages, I would say, on this one. I only go up three stages or three steps at 15 mils, so we might get uh, enough chance to put a fourth step in. But before we do that, I'm taking some tissue paper and I'm just going to stuff it into the, the lower hull of our Hellcat so that we don't get um, any overspray or anything like that in there. So make sure we pack it nice and tight, get as much of it in there as I can. There's nothing really breakable in the lower hull anyway, so we can just sort of pack it full. And so long as we're, we're relatively careful, we shouldn't get any paint on there. Now there's a little bit of stuff showing there at the back, so... If we're careful, we should be okay. We're probably still going to get a little bit of overspray in there, so it might be worth putting a little bit of masking tape down there too, or what I have here at the minute is a bit of blue tack. Uh, so let's get, get some blue tack in there. It's just to preserve the interior for as, as much as possible, and we don't want to um, have to go over anything. So I'm going to roll a sausage of this. Real quick. I think it's worth showing this as well, so it's all part of the process. Let's take a bit off the end of it there. What we know is that this ring, this plastic piece here, is the edge of the, the join point between the turret and the hull, so we could bring any masking we're using out to that point and we won't risk um, obscuring any paint that needs to be there. I know this looks a, a little bit laborious, but like I said, if you're batch painting, if you have like maybe four or five tanks to do, it's maybe just a, a step that's worthwhile carrying out anyway. Keeping your finish consistent. And hopefully, hopefully tear free. So <laughs> let's quickly get a knife in there and just pull some of the blue type black from that edge. What we can do is always go in with a paintbrush later on just to tidy it up if we feel like we need to. But if we do it right the first time, then we probably shouldn't need to. Using a wee craft knife like this is quite handy just to press that right down and get that seal as tight as we can. I think that should do it. That should be enough. So we have the shadow paint in the airbrush. What I am going to do is lower the pressure of my airbrush a bit, so if you hear me just trying to be a bit more, that'll do. We don't want to blow all this all over the place, so let's do it. Let's get our, our shadows down. We want to particularly focus, well, we want to give the entire vehicle a coat of this, so let's just start.
With the shadow now down, we can move on to our next coat. Now, the tank itself, or the vehicle itself, or should I even say the tank destroyer itself, um, or even gun motor carriage if you really want to call it that, um, got about three coats of the shadow over the base primer. So we were guaranteed that we weren't missing anything. And from what I can see, I don't think I have missed anything. So that's that's great. That means that's our, our bottom most color. We're now gonna be moving on to the next step up, which is Olive Dark Base. Now this is just a bit of a step up from the shadow. And the way to do this is to tackle it at a about a 50 60 degree angle and then after that the next step will be at like a 45 and then the final step will be a complete top down so that's that's the plan anyway so let's get it ready and like I said we're gonna hit it at a fairly oblique angle and then just give the whole thing a bit, a bit of a coat with it so and you should see that color coming up now Now the trick is to avoid anything, we want to retain shadow, so right in here where the suspension is, we want to avoid that entirely with this coat. And particularly on the back here, we kind of don't really want uh, this color to go any lower than the toe hitch in the middle of the back of the hull. So that we still retain a bit of a gradient going down the back, that reverse slope on the hull. What I'm also doing here is avoiding as much as possible these grills and anywhere that's a bit closer to the turret ring. So we're gonna focus mostly on the back panel here. And then just a little bit across the top nearer the turret ring here. but not much more than that really. And then we can also hit the crew hatches a bit heavier. Something like that. I'm not too sure how apparent this is at the minute. It is quite a subtle process. I think the next step up is where you're going to really see the difference starting to show through. So I'm going to continue on with this onto the turret and the turret basket and when we come back we'll have our next colour ready to go. So now we have the dark base down and it's dry it's time to move up to the next step. Now this is olive base which is pretty much <clears throat> one step short of where I, I kind of feel like I can go with this. So this is a lot lighter uh, than the dark base and we want to focus it a bit more on the, the upper areas. So we're going to be trying a bit more of a zenithal approach here, almost top down, but not quite. So let's just see how it goes. And um, yeah, want to be a bit higher angle this time as well. So. And hopefully you can see that colour coming up a bit more than the last one. Let's just see if my airbrush maybe needs a bit more pressure added to it. Yep. Just a little more, not too much.
And you can see now that colour coming up and we're avoiding these grills because they're going to be a bit darker. These particular two here, which are exhausts, we're going to be doing them in a, a darker colour anyway. But this is where we start to get to define the shape of the vehicle and point out any areas of interest. So let's just keep going. And then if we attack this front glacis plate from this angle, it'll give us a bit more shading as well from the brush guards and stuff on the headlights. Okay, and then a little bit off the back here as well because it's still a bit dark. Like so. And again we're trying to stay away from the turret ring a little bit. Now down onto the wheels. Again we'll be doing this at a fairly high angle now. And also trying to just hit the, the most bottom part of the wheels. Because the light will be shining down on the wheels and it will bring them up a little bit. That should do it for the hull. Again, I'll go and do the turret and the turret basket off camera and when we come back we'll be ready for what should probably or most likely be the last colour to be applied. So I'll just push on and see how we get. So now the olive base is all done, we can have a look at some of our, our detail parts here. And you can see like inside the turret basket there's very little highlighting because I want to retain it in shadow, but a certain few parts like brackets for seats and brackets for parts of the basket and a bit of the floor I've just hit them a little bit just to add to the, the visual interest. I don't want it to look like it's been retained completely in shadow. Uh, same on the turret. There's very little on the turret interior, but there is a couple of locations that just have a little bit of a hit of it. But overall, what we're getting is quite a nice looking natural fade from where the sun is hitting it down the sides of the turret and just making it look a little bit more interesting, you know, particularly from the side here, you can see the shadow under the uh, commander's gun ring is quite apparent there as well. So we're going to be moving on to what I think is going to be the last one. And this is going to be uh, Olive Drab Light Base. I don't know if I really want to take this any higher than that, just because this is almost leaving the realms of being a green and almost being like a, a very tan brown sort of color. So let's see what it looks like. It is quite bright. so. We'll see how we get on. Um, what I will be doing though is basically doing, pardon me, a top down and picking out shapes and details. So let's see, we'll start on the engine deck again. Okay, that's not looking too bad. Let's see if we can compare it to what the turret tone looks like. I think there's a, there's a definite difference, so yeah, let's just push on with that and see how we get on here. So again, just trying to be completely top down.
in the turret basket itself, well, there's not really much to do here, but we'll we'll just hit it with a little bit there anyway, just to brighten it up a touch. So at this stage, I'm sure this is basically where I want it to be. It might still be a little dark in places, it might still be a little too light, but I think I'm going to settle with that. I don't really want to take it too much further. I just want that shading to be there and be present. So what's going to happen next is we're going to give, off camera, I'm going to give the, the model a coat of gloss varnish. In fact, actually, before we do that, shall we see if we've saved our interior? Let's have a look. I think we have. Yep. So that has turned out pretty well. Not too worried about that because once the turret's down, it conceals the ring anyway. And what we get is our first look at what the interior can potentially look like. So if I can get it into a position where there's actually some light shining in there, you get the hint of something going on in there. So that's exactly what I was hoping for. Now, we're gonna let this paint dry. I'm going to give it about half an hour to dry fully. After that, we'll give the entire model a, uh, a coat of gloss varnish. That is because we're going to be moving on to um, shading. We're gonna be adding some panel lines. We're gonna be doing a bit of, um, transfer work as well and I want the gloss varnish down there because this paint can leave a bit of a texture and I want uh, our finish to look as tidy as possible so at this stage let it dry for half an hour make sure it's all settled because there's a fair bit of um, flow improver and stuff in there once it's dry give it the gloss varnish and then we'll come back and start looking at doing some ink uh, ink work or shade work and then working on our transfers. In fact, we'll probably do transfers first before we do any of the, the panel lining and stuff like that, just to make sure that's done right. Anyway, let's leave it to dry, let's gloss varnish it, and see what we have after that. With the gloss varnish all down, in fact, it's actually not just gloss varnish, it is a layer of Green Stuff World decal fixer, which is essentially a gloss varnish. Uh, that means that the surface is not only glossed, ready for the ink, it's also um, prepared for putting down transfers. So that's fine, that works. What we're going to do in this segment is just put down one transfer and we're going to put down our big allied star which is hopefully going to go over the front plate of our Hellcat which looks like it does fit indeed. That's okay. So the first thing I'm doing is dipping it in some water which uh, could have been a lot more clean. Uh, there's some some rubbish in the water there. I should have Ah well, it'll be fine. So what we're going to be doing then is once that's ready to go, we're going to be taking a little bit of decal softener. In fact, we can just, I think we can just do that now. Uh, this is powerful stuff, by the way. It's a bit like, um, if you've heard me talk about before, Microsol and Microset. It's a bit like Microsol, only it feels like it acts a little bit quicker than Microsol. And um, yeah, it does not give you a lot of time to play with the transfer once it's down. So you've got to make sure it's down and ready. So let's just prepare our surface, which basically means put a layer of the softener over the area. Now clearly it looks like I haven't left the um, the fixer to dry for long enough, but okay. So our transfer is now ready, it's now sliding on the, the sheet and what we're going to try and do is aim it so that the tip of the star just comes to the top rivet on the front plate and then slide the paper away. Now at this point the transfer will move a little bit but not very much. So we have to make sure that we have it as good as we can get it. Okay. Now with some softener on my brush, I'm going to work that over the top of the transfer and then we're gonna delicately fold it 
and let the transfer contour to the vehicle. Now at this point we're only a few seconds into applying it, but already you really don't want to touch it. It will be soft at this point already, and any more messing about with it will basically tear the transfer. So we have to leave that to sit now. But that's fine because we have other transfers to put down. So I'm going to go ahead and put the other transfers down. I'll explain what they are. So first up I'm going to be putting what's called a bridging plate here which is a yellow circle with a number in it. That gives... Um, the purpose of that is for people that are building the likes of temporary bridges, Bailey bridges and stuff like that. They can always look down the line of vehicles they're planning to move, take the heaviest vehicle and plate the bridge accordingly to take that heaviest vehicle. Uh, or sometimes there might be multiple bridges where there'll be a, a 10 ton or 5 ton, a 10 ton, 15 or 20, 30 or 40, and they'll be diverting traffic uh, accordingly uh, so that the right vehicle hits the right bridge. So that's what the bridging plate will be. I might put a name on the side, on either side, I'm not sure yet. I have a few name plates lying around. On the back quarter here is going to be the... Um, the tank's army number. Now that's not the tank number, the tank number is a different thing. Uh, the army number will be the USA followed by I think is a six or six, it's about seven or eight digit number here. On the top of the engine deck we're going to put a smaller white star. Uh, pro yeah, probably we're going to put one on the, the top there. Nothing goes on the back as far as I'm aware and then on the turret there'll be one white star here and one white star here and that's basically it. Not a lot to do, but it can be a little bit time consuming and of course we have the uh, set time of the mic of the um the decal softener as well. And once it's down, we then have to go back over it again with the decal fixer. So once it's down, everything will look gloss again. Then we're ready to move on and do my panel lining, my ink washes and stuff like that. And <laughs> after that, I will then matte varnish the whole vehicle. That makes sure everything is sealed, everything is safe. It's going to take a fair amount of abuse uh, when it's being used on the tabletop. So, I'm going to go ahead, get the rest of these transfers put down, and we'll see you on the other side of that. With the transfers all down, and then put another layer of sealant over them, which is the, the decal fixer, the sort of gloss varnish stuff, we can have a look at how colourful our Hellcat is starting to look. So we have our big front allied star, we have our bridging plate, which in this case I've put down 16. Now, I don't have the original source material to tell me what bridging plate that should have, but I have seen examples of um, privately uh, owned ones, restored ones, having anything from 15 to 18 uh, marked on their bridging plate, so I thought 16 was a happy medium there. We've got our vehicle number on the back, we have a smaller allied star on the top of the back engine deck. Not really much there. On the turret, we have three allied stars, so we have one either side and one on the top. So I was going to put a name down, but I decided against that and um, just thought I'll, I'll do it a bit more simple and keep it a bit more of a generic Hellcat of September 44, um, which is roughly the, the period that these markings sort of line up with. Um, so at this point, we're going to be moving on to some inks, well, washes, and we're tr we're trying to keep the vehicle gloss to ease the that process because we're going to be doing a lot of panel lining and stuff like that. And the first one we're going to be doing pre predominantly in panel lining is we're going to be using uh, Athonian Camo Shade. This is a great little wash. I've been using it a lot on my 15 mil. I've even been using it on some of my um, Warhammer stuff as well. But it's a great shade to put into something that's painted in this sort of olive drab coloration. So let's see and let's show you what I'm trying to achieve here. So for example on the top of the engine deck we have a lot of these panel lines here where the the engine deck can be opened up and all we're wanting to do is just put the wash into these panel lines and the gloss varnish aids in that if you don't have a very steady hand it will allow you a bit more, well it'll be a bit more forgiving if you're a bit shaky first thing in the morning and you've just had a coffee 
which is a big no-no when you're painting. You don't you don't put nicotine or caffeine into your system before you sit and paint. And all you're looking to do is get the wash into these lines. Just to shade them a little bit. Now we can also take this further, we can take it out, out of these panel lines and we can start to shade things like the fuel filler cap. And just run a little bit of the wash around that. But it does help define some of the more shallow details on the model because some of it is quite shallow. If you want to shade it, this is the way to go. So it will be quite subtle. And if you want to miss this step, by all means, don't worry about it too much. But me being a bit of a a stickler for some details on, on historical miniatures. I do like to spend a little bit of extra time just to add some of these little touches in. Like that. Now, we'll do that on the rest off camera. The other colour we're going to be using is null Oil. And this is probably the more important uh, for getting your details visible because we're going to be using that to define uh, the likes of the, the engine grills and stuff like that. So, for example, we have these two open slits here, which are the exhausts. And having a gloss varnish down in these parts really does help get the wash right down into them and keep it in there too, so it does start to define that a little bit. And then we're going to go across the rest of the the back grills and do the same. I always think adding this sort of touch to grills and vents and stuff like that adds a bit of depth to the miniature that it really needs in some cases. So something like that just adds a little touch of depth. Now we're also going to be taking the black, the null oil into the hull of the vehicle and probably either use it to panel line our lower details like this and that's probably what we will be doing and this just preps that inner shading for some weathering steps that we'll do later on. And don't worry about being too neat with this because once we have other weathering down, it'll probably look a bit more like oil stains, oil and grease stains, that sort of thing. So not too concerned about that. Anyway, I'm going to push on with this, see how, how uh, we get on. And when we come back, we'll show you all the shading done and then we'll be ready to put down a matte varnish. At this stage, I pushed on ahead and gave everything a matte varnish. So right now, the tank, or the Hellcat in this case, is matte varnished and you should be able to see roughly what our um, green wash has done and what the darker wash, the null oil, has done on the grills and the intakes and stuff like that and how um, the null oil has worked inside the floor. So it makes it all just a little more apparent, shades it a little touch, not too much, but just adds a little definition to certain parts of the vehicle. So. You might actually be able to see it a bit, maybe a bit better on the turret around all the lines and stuff like that. I've just added a little bit of the shading there. But at that at this stage, I'm going to try and speed things up a little bit. I know you guys don't always want to watch every little thing being base coated. So at this stage, I'm just going to base coat everything that needs base coated, tell you what the colors are right now, and then just get on with it. Because when we come back, we can start all the weathering processes. And I think that's the part you guys seem to enjoy most about me painting these armored fighting vehicles is just how to weather and what, what to do with weathering and little, little subtleties that go into that. So with that in mind, we'll set this stuff to the side. On our tracks, we're going to be painting uh, Panzer Aces from Vallejo Track Primer. It's just a, a mild brown colour. On the tyres of the wheels, 
except the back because they don't have rubber on them. The tires on the wheels, the seat cushions inside the turret, they are going to be going Corvus black. Our tools, so our Pioneer tools and stuff like that, the handles of them will be going flat earth, another Vallejo model colour. The heads of the tools will be going uh, Corvus black as well. The machine gun on top uh, will be going, I believe I'm going to be doing a dark metallic, probably an Iron Warriors for that, because then it'll get a black wash and a bit of a highlight. The brass of the rounds in the thing, <laughs> in the ammunition thing, thing, yeah. Um, I actually have a proper brass paint for that, so again, that's another Vallejo colour, that's just Vallejo brass. And if there's any other colours I'm picking out, I will let you know after the fact. But I believe that's going to cover the majority of the colours I'm going to be using. There might be a bit of a brighter silver in here for the headlights, but I'm not uh, too concerned about those at this point. So let's get all the base coating done, and let's move on to the really interesting stuff, like the weathering. Now we have all the base coating done, we can have a look at what our Hellcat has turned out like. So on the sides of the hulls we have our tools in there. It's quite a nice little shade of brown that I've used on that too, I quite like that. And same on here. Now a little note, the cleaning rods, these are gun cleaning rods uh, for the main gun. The ends of those should be metallic because they screw together to create the full length. Uh, this big pry bar here, we're going to highlight that with a little bit of um, a metallic because it's sort of like a grease covered metal item. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll get to that eventually. The tracks with the track primer on them. It's a subtle colour, but it'll work well as a base for when we start to um, add some weathering to it and then eventually a, a bit of a silver dry brush just to tidy it up. Uh, in the turret basket, we've painted the seats Corvus black, but also there's a toothed ring inside the turret ring, which is part of the, the traverse mechanism. Now I've painted that in lead belcher rather than iron warriors wanted to bring it up a little bit not that it matters so much because it's going to get highlighted anyway to be a bit more apparent so that's just the base for the metallics onto the turret i've taken a vallejo color khaki and painted the little musette packs there's four of them on the tank so there's uh two on each side just painted them in that and then the gun of course went iron warriors and Vallejo Brass. We've also painted bits of the recoil mechanism for the gun and for the breech of the gun as well, uh, just to get those tidied up as well. Now, we're going to be on to washing all these parts now, and we're really only going to be using two colours of wash. So the first one will be Agrax Earthshade. That will be for everything that isn't metallic. Uh, it's pretty straightforward there. And anything that is metallic will be getting a Nuln Oil. So pretty straightforward, an easy step to do. Again, we'll do it off camera, we'll come back. Uh, just to let you know, just do this in steps, that this is what step we're at now. So we'll push on with that, and then when we come back, we'll um, push on maybe with a little bit of highlighting and then start weathering. With the wash down and now dry, we're going to be moving on to a little bit of highlighting. Now, I'm not going to be highlighting every single piece of equipment on this vehicle. I am going to be highlighting the olive drab base coat and I think that's going to be enough because I don't want to over highlight it and start to make it look a little cartoony. I still want to be able to add some decent weathering effects to it. They're going to make it look a little more realistic and highlighting all the little bits of tools and stuff like that isn't really something I want to be doing. So for the highlight of the olive drab I'm going back to the AK Interactive modulation set and using olive drab light base which is the next step up from where we were originally. And for this, I'm just taking a little bit on a brush. And I'm just wanting to catch edges. Just a little bit of an edge highlight on some of the parts. Not too much. But just a bit to redefine uh, the edges and the corners and stuff. So we'll just go over the vehicle now with this and we'll see what the result is after that. 
Now all the highlighting's complete on the olive drab, we can see in some cases, like particularly on the front of the turret, uh, we can see a bit more plainly the kind of highlighting that's going on here. So it's just little spots of light, little lines here and there just to bring out the shape of the vehicle a bit more and define the edges of the top of the turret and the hull and so on. Now we're going to rack that. <laughs> we're going to rack that by using some German camouflage black brown. This is a Vallejo model colour. And we're going to be using this uh, in tandem with a bit of sponge to do some chipping. Now I'm sure a lot of people were thinking, well, where is the chipping coming? You know, when are, when are you getting to that stage? That's why I kind of glossed over a lot of the base coating stages and, and highlighting stages. I just wanted to get to the weathering because that's what brings a model like this to life. You know, at the minute it looks nice, it looks clean, looks factory fresh. We don't want factory fresh, we want a little bit of wear and tear. So, taking the sponge, dipping it into the paint a little bit, and then all we're doing is picking out areas where we think there's going to be a bit of high wear and tear. So, corners are always good for it. I'm not going to go over the top on the chipping, because I really don't want the vehicle to look too heavily worn. I want it to look used, but I don't want it to look, to look abused. So it's really just a case of just taking the sponge and just dabbing in certain places just to get across an idea that the vehicle has some has been seeing use, is driving through stuff or over stuff, is taking a bit of wear and tear from just generally being driven about, and always the peak where the glacis plate starts to meet the, the underslope is always a very prime location for a bit of chipping and a bit of wear and tear. So I can also drag the sponge to make it look like it's been scraping through hedges and walls perhaps as well. Just adds that little bit extra to it. So I'm going to put a bit more on my sponge. Real quick and then let's see. Areas where maybe the crew are climbing up, stepping on the vehicle, or people have been stepping on the vehicle, sliding off edges and stuff like that. Around hatches is always a good place to put a bit of chipping to. And then coming down the side of the vehicle, maybe not too much, maybe on the back of the vehicle on the engine deck, because that's where you're going to be filling your fuel from. It's about to just a little bit of light wear and tear up there. You go a bit heavier off this back corner, perhaps. A bit like that. Make it a bit patchy there. Maybe a little bit on the lower sides where, you know, maybe stones chips of stuff has come up and just started to take that paint away again not too much so let's do that again on the other side let's actually cover that piece on the other side a little bit so off this back corner just work along that bottom edge a bit just to break it up not too much like that. See anywhere else in the top deck I want to go with it. That might actually be enough on the hull. So let's move on. Let's quickly go over the turret as well. Uh, so areas where you're going to have a lot of high maintenance or high wear and tear. So areas like up on this turret or on this gun ring off the back bustle and then the edges of the turret as well and perhaps down on these quarter pieces Not so much off this side of the turret because your 50 caliber is generally going to be in the way there. And a little bit of wear and tear on this hoop. 
some of the hand holds. Uh, maybe off the front of the top of the gun mantle. But again, try and keep it fairly minimal so that we're not destroying the highlighting work that we've done already. I think that might, honestly, that might do it. Because, yeah, I, I do want to retain a lot of the, the airbrush work and a lot of the edge highlighting done as well. So let's not go too much more than this. Let's see about there. Maybe a little bit off this side. Not too much. I ought to do it. Now, turret interior. And turret floor. It's going to have a lot of work done to it because that's where this particular piece of floor is where the uh, gunner will be sitting. So we want to make sure that that is worn down and then we're going to do the inside of the turret ring a bit. Or like that. So again, not being overzealous with it, but you know, making sure that it's there. We are going to be going over some of it with uh, a little bit of silver paint as well. Now, getting into the turret here from this perspective is a bit of a challenge. So I'm wondering how best to approach that. Um, it might actually be easier just to take a brush. Uh, so let's very quickly get a brush going. Dip it into some water. Get it all softened up a bit. And let's just reach into the turret with the brush now. You may not be able to see right back in here. There's a bit of a shelf. And all I'm doing is just tapping the tip of the brush along that. Just to provide a bit of worn paint away there. And then maybe on the inside of this ring. Along there, and particularly if we can get a bit closer in here, there's a bit of ready rack stowage in here that could do with a bit of work, and across the top of the gun. I don't think we'll try too much harder than that in the, the turret. So let's have a look inside the hull now. The hull should be okay because we can just use the sponge on this one. So let's prep our sponge up a bit. Get a bit of paint going in there. And let's look at the floor. So the floor can look as nasty as we want it to. Because that's where the majority of the, the crew of the Hellcat will be standing shuffling around, moving stuff about. We can pay particular attention to the weathering of it. What we can do as well is take it up onto the this piece here, which is the, uh, the sponson shelf. Now inside these sponsons, normally on a real Hellcat, this is where the ammunition is stored, or some of the 76 rounds are stored for the main gun. So these would be a, a particular area of high wear and tear uh, when they're obviously expanding ammunition, changing ammunition out, resupplying. Do a little bit of the firewall here at the back. We want to get enough wear and tear in there so that when we come into it with the rest of our weathering technique, which is probably mostly going to be pigment powders from, from this stage on, uh, we want it to look realistic. So plenty of wear and tear in there. We're going to go over that with some silver 
and uh, yeah, I think that would probably do it. So with the chipping done, I'm going to have to pick a colour for the silver highlight to the chipping. So I have several colours lying around in front of me, but it's deciding which one I want to use. Uh, I'm probably going to go with a little bit of lead belcher because it's not too bright. And that's not, you know, natural steel when it's worn, when it's worn down, when the paint's worn through to the, ma the natural metal, it's not terribly bright. It's kind of like a, a pencil-y graphite colour. With only the slightest little hint of, um, of silver, of, of a bright silver. So there's two ways to do this. We could do this with a pencil. But at this stage, what we'll do is take the areas of highest wear, where most of the chipping's occurring, and just dab the paintbrush into that area to bring up a bit of a bare steel look to it. I'm not being overzealous with it. Again, I keep saying these words like, don't be overzealous. So what I'll do at this stage is go over the rest of the vehicle with this and then we'll come back and we'll start looking at the next stage of our weathering. Now that I have the metallic chipping down as well, you can see uh, inside the hull in particular I've really given it a good go with the metallics and overall the vehicle looks worn but not abused. You know, it looks used but not abused is what I'm, I'm kind of liking uh, to go with. So now um, before we do anything else, like there's a few other little bits of highlighting and stuff that I want to, to carry out. We're going to be doing the pigment work first. So I have two pigment powders. First up, I have Cromlex Trench Earth. And I have one of my favourites, um, Meg Europe Dust, which is a great, great pigment powder. I absolutely adore that. So the Trench Earth is a little darker and a little redder than the European Dust. So... Let's see if I can show underneath what the two of them look like. So we have our Europe dust, which is a little lighter, and this one, which is a little bit darker and a little bit redder. And <clears throat> what we're going to do is use the trench earth on the bottom half of the vehicle, primarily, mostly heavily the bottom half of the vehicle, and put the Europe dust towards the outside of the wheels and then over the hull and over the turret and hull interior and so on. So we're going to start with the trench earth. I always love this bit because <clears throat> this is the messiest part of, of all the work. And we're going to work the trench earth into and around the suspension. So I've got some on my brush. And I'm going to start working that into the depths of the vehicle a bit. We don't want to go too heavy, but we do want to make sure there's a, a good amount of it built up in there. And work it out as well and then we'll work it into the tracks. And if it gets on the wheels that's fine, not worried about that. I don't mind if the this particular dust looks a bit more uneven. That's perfectly fine. Get plenty on that back idler wheel. You can see what I mean. It's it's really messy in here now, so it it's great. I love doing this. I don't get to do enough pigment work in, in a lot of my painting videos, so let's work it in. And then over the tracks. Make sure we don't miss anything where dust, heavier dust and mud would accumulate. So in behind the wheel, the sprocket wheel there. And we want to go over the track. 
Yeah, a little smudge up there on the hull. But for this pigment powder, I really want it to work into the tracks a lot more and a lot in and around the suspension. Again, we don't want to miss any areas like in here in this overhang of the hull. We want to make sure we get some pigment in there. And then we can work it up over the back plate. I'm going to use some of the, the excess here just to work it in to the lower plate here. Don't have to do underneath. Okay, so let's take a bit of this as well and work it into the floor plating. I want to really work it into the corners. Or like that I think that's going to look pretty decent and then of course we have a little bit of flooring in the turret basket as well so let's just use a bit more of the the spill to work that in there too and we could put a bit on the seats as well Sort of like that, just to get a bit of mess in there. So that's the first pigment. That's our trench earth. Let's put that away. And let's get our Europe dust out. By far one of my most favourite pigment powders to use on any project that I can. So there it is. For this, because it's a bit lighter, I'm just going to dab a little bit sort of at random I think and then work over the top of the hull just in little patchy bits and once it's there then we start moving it around let it gather up And then over the engine deck. We can go a bit heavier and take some of the darker stuff in there too if we want. Okay. That doesn't look too bad for the hull. Nice and dusty. Add a bit more onto these wheels, I think, on this side, because they're a bit light. I'll do. Move that to the side. Again, turret interior. We'll add a bit more into this bit of floor. And work it out to the edges a bit. Yeah, that looks pretty good. On the seat. Okay, and then on the turret, we'll just take a little bit of what we've dropped and just work it over just in sort of a patchy sort of stain. We can also work it down into the turret a bit more because we can get in a lot easier or a lot more easily with the brush. 
this is going to look like a, a very sort of a vehicle that's been used quite heavily in the summer and has been out and about in all the dust driving in column you know maybe 30 odd vehicles in column and this is you know number 26 and it's it's just getting all the dust and crap off everybody else this is the joy of, of working with pigment powders yes it's messy but you know if you were doing this as model as a display piece then you ne wouldn't necessarily have to to um, saddle it down you wouldn't necessarily need to be sealing it you could just very carefully put it on a shelf and be very happy with the work you've done but you know getting that sort of immediate result from something so simple as a pigment powder is really rewarding so, so now as a final step we're going to try and seal it down we have some isopropyl alcohol in this bath we have to be very careful with isopropyl as well so if you're using it be very aware of the fumes and um, what we need to use what way we need to do this is just charge our brush with some and then dab it into the areas let it soak it all up and when the alcohol evaporates our pigment powders should be sealed down So let's work in the hull here first. I have to do this slightly on a flat just to make sure that it's right. It also allows us to move around the pigments a little bit if we choose to. So that should give us a nice grimy finish. And then over the top of the hull, I'm just going to be a bit more liberal. And just let the alcohol do what it wants to here. And just let the capillary motion of the alcohol do most of the work for us. Now, if you don't want to use isopropyl alcohol, that's totally fine. Uh, Green Stuff World do actually have a pigment fixer fluid, which works very well and doesn't leave or doesn't give you all the fumes and stuff that the, the alcohol is um, making you suffer while you're sealing your pigments down. So another thing I'm going to do is only seal the tracks and the wheels. I'm going to leave all the pigment in here dry. I don't want it to move around, I want it to stay where it is. And I want it to continue to look at least mostly very dusty rather than dust that's maybe settled and moved around. I want the suspension to look quite messy as if the vehicle hasn't been cleaned in a while. I'll go over the tracks as well. So again, remember if you're using this stuff and if you've never used it before, be very aware of the fumes. Because the fumes will are dangerous. Like this this is a very flammable material you're playing with, so just be aware of that. Make sure you have a couple of windows open or a fan on or something. Or a respirator if you can get one. Just to help alleviate yourself with the fumes. Okay, so so far so good. That is mostly starting to dry off now. Let's move that to the side and let's wrap the turret. And I do hope throughout this tutorial you've seen the benefits at least of using the airbrush as the first few steps, so particularly if you're going to be batch painting a few vehicles. If you're playing Tank War or something like that and you have maybe five or six vehicles to do, I hope none of these steps uh, feel too uh, labour intensive. I want you to be able to enjoy each step as you're going along. And once you see the finished product, you think, yes, I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm, I'm glad I went with that. This also gives me a chance while the pigment powder is mixed with the alcohol to move it around inside the turret a little bit. 
just to get a bit of a dusty finish to it as well. So we're going to leave that to dry. I'm going to clean my desk up. And uh, when we come back, we have a couple of final steps and then we'll be able to call our Hellcat finished. So now the alcohol is dried off. <clears throat> it's all evaporated away and left our pigment powder sitting all over the vehicle. It's looking really cool. I'm really, really liking that effect now. It's brought all the weathering into context. It's dulled the greens in such a way it just looks great it it feels like a realistic looking vehicle to me now so if maybe one or two last things i want to do the first thing is a little bit of a dry brush and for this i'm going to be using some necron compound and this isn't the most important step but it's a step that i want to do because i've spent so much time on the interior of the vehicle already it would be a shame to miss out some of the details. So I have a little bit of a turret ring in here, which I've said before, which has the teeth that are visible, the turret traverse. And I'm just going to very quickly brighten those up a bit with the Necron compound. Just so that these parts are a little bit more visible. So that when you get a nice good close look at the vehicle, you know, these details are actually present. And I don't mind the silver getting in a few other spots as well, just to add that sort of final glimmer of highlight in there. And a bit of wear and tear. So I think that looks pretty decent. Let's just get a bit more in there now. Don't want to... Don't want to go mad with it at this stage, but that's about as much as I want to do for the interior of the turret. Uh, the other place I want to do it is on our 50 caliber. Again, not too much. Just want to touch up. Just highlight a little bit here and there, not very much at all. Just to get a bit of a more of a used metal look. like that so not much more than that really and another place I want to put it on is the tracks because obviously the tracks contact the ground and the ground tends to polish metal that is frequently in contact with it so let's just do that and what this does is give us that last bit of contrast that last bit of realism By making it look as if the, the cleats of the track or the tread of the track has been in contact with the ground a lot. And what we can do as well is the edges of the track. Oh, we can also hit the, uh, the tanker bar a bit. Just to bring it up a little bit too. Maybe a bit on the polishing or the cleaning rods. And back onto our other side of the track. And I'm also not worried if I manage to hit a few areas of green because it just looks like a bit more recent scraping and damage. I think that's looking pretty decent. I don't know what you guys think, but you can let me know in the comments, of course. So, is there anything else I wish to do before I wrap? Hmm? Anything else I could think of? Well, there is our headlights and our tail lights. So our headlights are basically just silver. So I think real quick we'll hit them with a bit of Runefang steel. They don't look like they've been styled as blackout lights or um, convoy lights, so I'm not too worried about how um, big the lenses are because it seems like they have the big standard sort of lenses. So let's get in there. Just add that silver 
in there, and in there. Just to show that there is something going on in there, that they're not just blanked out for whatever reason. Now, on to the tail lights. The tail lights are cool because they're red. Uh, <laughs> and what I'm going to use for that is a bit of spirit stone red. It's basically just a red gel that we can put over the area where the, the tail light is. And it's going to be pretty straightforward because the, the tail light encompasses, or the red part of the tail light, encompasses the upper half of the light itself, the upper half of the light fixture. And if you look closely, it's sort of an arch shape, sort of a crescent moon shape or a half moon shape. Just a case of filling that in with a bit of the spirit stone red. And once that dries, we have a little bit of visual interest on the back of the vehicle to go along with it. Now we could paint in the bottom parts, but they're essentially black, so we could touch them with a bit of black paint if we want. However, we have our final assembly to do and hopefully I've done everything right at this stage and it should all work pretty easily. So we need to glue the turret basket into the bottom of the turret and then we can slot the turret in and have done with. So I have a little bit of super glue here and all I'm going to do with the super glue is a little dab just here. Maybe a bit much, we'll spread that out a bit. And then on the other side, same again. Spread that out. And then, if all has gone well, the two halves should match up and should sit more or less flush, so just to make sure that that back part and that front part are securely in. Clean off a bit of that excess there so that it doesn't super glue the turret into place when we put it on the vehicle. Now, moment of truth, everybody. Moment of truth. Let's see if we've managed to finish our Hellcat. So the turret slots down, and will it turn? It does turn. I did clean uh, the the contact points where the turret joins the hull. I did that with a bit of a craft knife just to peel away some of the paint. But there we are. And if I can get a light to shine a bit brighter, can we see the interior or have we dulled it a bit too much? I'd say we've dulled it a bit, but as you look in, I'll get some photography for that. As you look in, you get a little hint of what's happening in there. And that's really cool. I have wanted to see that stage of this video <laughs> so badly since I started. Um, I'm a sucker for anything that has a bit of visible interior. So there you are. One M18 Hellcat tank destroyer from Warlord Games for bold action. Guys, I have absolutely adored this one. It's been a real uplifting experience for me just to sit down and get to grips with a vehicle like this and know that I'm working at home and I have all my material around me. I know what my material is and I get to play with it and, and bring something like this to life, which is fantastic. So I really hope you've enjoyed this one as much as I have. If you have any questions or comments, please do leave them down below in the comment section and uh, I will do my best once this tutorial's out to have a conversation with you guys. If there's anything you think I missed, please do let me know as well. You know, I'm, I'm happy to take the criticism. So thank you so much for watching, guys. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And until next time, take care, stay safe, and see you again soon.